up everyone? Mike here, coming at you from the Mushroom Farm. Great video for you guys today. So we're gonna do a subscriber suggested video today and we're gonna talk about creating a grain spawn schedule on your farm, like start to finish, using a fresh bag of grain spawn that has not been inoculated, taking it all the way to full colonization. We're gonna talk about what grain spawn is, and talk to you guys about how I make it, refer to you guys some of my videos, give you exact recipes. Now I've been growing gourmet mushrooms full time nearly a decade now, so I've got a lot of experience with this. So if you guys are into mushrooms and farming or just now tuning into this channel, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. But anyway, let's get on to talking about this grain spawn schedule, kind of the base principles that go about creating your own grain spawn schedule on your farm. So first of all, what even is grain spawn? So grain spawn is the nutritive transport mechanism that we're basically using to take the mycelium and put it onto the bulk substrate, okay? So we use grain. This is uncolonized grain right here, okay? And I'm going to inoculate this, and in just two weeks or so, it's gonna turn into this fully colonized grain spawn that is ready to go onto the bulk substrate. Now what grain spawn is, it's essentially just like a little ball of grain that we've sterilized. The mycelium has kind of grown around it, it's encased it, it's digesting it, it's kind of like sucking up the nutrients from it. And what we're doing is we're gonna bust this grain up then, kind of like this right here, okay? So we bust it up so we got all these nice little myceliated nutrient dense balls and we're gonna disperse these all amongst our bulk substrate, okay? And that's gonna colonize our bulk substrate and give our bulk substrate nutrition. And now this fresh grain spawn, we can inoculate this in a myriad of ways. Now, one of my favorite ways to inoculate my grain spawn is with liquid culture, okay? And I make my own liquid culture here on the farm, and I sell some really good mushroom genetics. So if you guys want to pick up any of these genetics, you can head over to my website. I've got that link down in the description box below. I've had a lot of you guys pick up my eight species uh, master pack recently, and that is one of my favorite culture packs that I sell. But it kind of gets you going with all the good strains. You get all the hericiums, all my good oyster mushrooms, all the kings. So go ahead and check that out. But I've got, like I said, my website linked in the description box below and you guys can get your own commercial liquid cultures there. Now, like I said, I like to inoculate my grain mainly with liquid culture, but you can use agar, you can do grain to grain. And I'll kind of talk about some of the benefits, some of the cons to all of these and what you guys need to know and why I choose what I choose. Now, talking about kind of like the base principles of making your spawn, I'll just say, first of all, you gotta get your recipe right. And my favorite recipe is a no prep recipe. I use 1500 milliliter of millet, 1000 milliliter of vermiculite, 1000 milliliter of water. And that is my favorite recipe. And I will link in the description box below a video on how I like to make my no prep grain spawn. But that's a recipe I've been using for honestly like six plus years. I've grown probably 40 to 50,000 pounds of mushrooms with that specific recipe, okay? So it is super reliable. No one needs to question it. All you need to do is do it and it works great. Now what I'm gonna kinda talk about here is how long it takes for the mycelium to fully grow into your grain spawn bag, okay? So when you're using something like liquid culture like I'm talking about right now, it takes about two weeks for that mycelium to fully grow into your grain spawn, all right? Now another thing you can inoculate your grain spawn with is agar, okay? So here's a plate. This is actually like a bear's head plate a Heristium Americana plate, you can choose to inoculate your grain spawn with a plate of agar. Now, honestly, like I said, I prefer liquid culture, and I'll kind of talk to you guys about why I prefer that, but some people prefer agar, and let's talk about the preferences there, but the time frame, you're looking at like two weeks when you're going from whether liquid culture or agar regardless, okay? So just kind of think, if you're starting from scratch right here, it's gonna take two weeks to go from culture to make fully colonized grain spawn, okay? Now, I wanna say, if somebody's really concerned about time, that's where grain to grain transfer comes in. And a grain to grain transfer can be fully colonized in about one week, so it saves you a little bit of time. But anyway, let's kinda of talk right now about the benefits of using liquid culture first, and then I'll kinda of talk about agar, and then we'll talk about grain to grain, okay? So first we're gonna start with kinda of liquid culture. I feel like the main benefits with liquid culture is, well, first of all, I make my own liquid culture here on the farm. I know it's clean. I trust it. It's really cool because you can kind of keep your syringes loaded up, whether it's in like a jar, like some jars you see behind me here, or you preload them in a syringe, okay? 
Kind of like when I sell you guys liquid cultures, okay, and I have them preloaded in syringes. If you could start making your own batches of preloaded syringes, or even just another way that you can safely store your jars of liquid culture, I personally feel like keeping the preloaded syringes is the safest, but then it's really cool because you can just go to your bag, you could pull out a syringe, and you can inoculate your spawn right then and there, and you don't have to question it. Like They will stay good in liquid culture form to inoculate grain spawn for years. I made a video on how long does a liquid culture last, so if you guys haven't seen that video, check it out, but I proved in that video that you can keep a liquid culture like this up to five years, and it's still viable, okay? I don't really recommend storing them longer than one year. I pretty much tell everybody to try to use it within one year, but honestly, it will last up to five years. I've tested it and I've proven it. So that's a major benefit, I feel like, right there of using liquid culture. And then also, it grows in really evenly. You pretty much spray it over all your grain. I'll use personally about five cc's for a bag like this, a five pound bag. But since I make it myself and I know each individual syringe is clean, if I'm using a 10 cc syringe, it's not uncommon for me to just spray the whole thing in there if I'm just inoculating one bag of a specific species. But you can, like I said, split it up into five cc increments and five cc's will colonize that no problem. Now, if you're using jars, you can squirt in less, like anywhere from like one to three cc's in a jar, and that will fully colonize the jar. Now, I'll say kind of the downside of liquid culture is you can't tell if it's contaminated, like you may be able to tell agar, but honestly, I feel like if you batch test your liquid culture like I do here on the farm, I always test my first syringe out of the batch, and I also test my last syringe that I pull out of the batch when I pull them out of the jars. So that way I know if I get a clean plate on my first syringe and I get a clean plate on my last syringe, all of the ones in between that should be clean. And if one isn't, it's just a fluke. But I'll just say it's super, super rare if that happens. I feel like it's highly reliable. I've been using this method of preloading syringes for probably about six years now full time. That's kind of when I made the switch from agar to LC. It was probably about six years ago. And the first year of getting into that, definitely like switching from agar to LC was a learning curve. But like once I kind of get, got in the habit of doing it and kind of figuring out how I like to store my syringes and everything like that and just inoculate my grain spawn, I love it in my schedule. Like I personally wouldn't do it any other way on my farm. Like that's my favorite way. Now agar, okay, let's talk about inoculating your grain spawn with agar. Kind of like what the pros and cons are to that. Personally, for me, the con is I feel like it's more work to maintain your agar plates and just make agar plates. It's a lot easier for me personally to make and store LC, and that's kind of why I go that route. A lot of guys that inoculate from agar do it just because you can see for sure that you don't have any contaminants on the plate. I think that's probably like the number one benefit. But like, but like I said, with using LCs, if you're batch testing and preloading, you can kind of eliminate all that worry then and um, it's not really that big of a deal that you can't see, see it anymore. But that's the main reason why people like to use agar to inoculate their grain spawn. Now, as far as inoculating your grain spawn with an agar plate, I like to use one agar plate per five pound bag of grain if I'm gonna do it. For a jar, you can get away with about one third of a plate and that works great for a jar. I like to cut them up into like little squares so you got like mini inoculation pieces, but some people will just like throw the whole thing in there. You guys do whatever you want. But I also want to say, I don't use jars personally for any part of my commercial operation. This one is actually kind of old and over-colonized, but I've got a lot of pheno hunts going on right now. And I really only use these for kind of like pheno hunting or just like little tests that I'm doing if I'm testing something and I don't want to do like a big batch. That's the only reason I ever use a jar. But usually for commercial cultivation, I'm using bags and that's the way to roll, guys. Okay, so grain to grain transfer. If I take this grain and I break it up and I go ahead and I put it into freshly sterilized grain like this, it only takes about one week to colonize, okay? So it will save you time doing a grain to grain transfer versus going from LC or agar straight to grain, okay? So think about that a little bit. If you ever fall behind in your LC or your agar production, you can potentially use a grain to grain transfer to get you a week ahead of schedule as compared to LC to grain, okay? So keep that in mind for your farm. Now I just wanna say personally on my farm, I don't use a grain to grain transfer that frequently. I only use it if I'm trying to expand a certain species of grain that I'm working with. And that's pretty infrequent because your grain can be very effective. Just um, a little bit of grain goes a long way with gourmet commercial cultivation. So you can get 
a lot of use out of just using LC and putting that right into one bag of grain. With this one bag of grain, I can inoculate 20 10 pound bags of blue oyster, for example, and I can grow just about like 60 pounds of blue oyster then from one bag of grain spawn. Okay, so 60 pounds of blue oyster from one bag of grain spawn or 60 pounds of lion's mane, you know, anything like that. It's amazing. So one bag of grain spawn is highly effective and that's kind of like why I don't worry about making lots and lots of these. I do know like there's some cube growers out there that might be interested in something like that and I'll say maybe that's when you could apply a technique like that because um, different species like that require more grain in certain instances. We use way less grain in commercial gourmet cultivation. So that's where it may be applicable, would be more more so for like a cube grower or something like that. If you're trying to get a whole lot of grain produced, that's where grain to grain transfer really could kind of come into play a little more. And I'll just say too, certain species like, like oyster mushrooms, you know what I mean? Really highly aggressive mushrooms. They may do better with a grain to grain transfer than other mushrooms. I really don't like the way hericiums look as far as reading your grain spawn and being able to tell when it's ready when you do a grain to grain transfer. I feel like you're better off doing LC to grain when you're commercially growing hericiums, especially if you're following like my recipes. I just feel like the grain becomes so easy to read, then you can know you can know exactly like when to inoculate your bulk substrate with that grain and there's no guessing really. You don't have like excessive pinning maybe in just one spot. That will happen sometimes when you do a grain to grain transfer, you might get a little excessive pinning in one spot for one reason or another, but that won't happen as frequently when you do LC or agar to grain. So, and I'll probably say, just say just for me personally, the main reason why I don't do grain to grain transfers on my farm is just because I'm a mass producer of LC and it's much easier for me to make more LC than it is um, mass amounts of grain on my farm. So it's easier for me to make good clean LC and then just inoculate all my grain with LC. But like I said, if you guys want to do grain to grain transfer, go for it. But I feel like there's different times where it's applicable, like when it's good and when it's kind of bad. I also feel like um, going grain to grain is like just opening up another vector for contamination. Like I said, when I'm batch testing my LCs, I know each of those are clean. So when I go to put it in my grain, I feel confident, you know, every single time. And it's like a nice clean vessel to work with. Like each syringe is like, you know, it's nice and clean, but like you could have like a contaminant on the outside of a jar or something on the bag, you know what I mean? If you're going grain to grain from a bag to another bag. And I just wanna say if anyone has questions, like can you go bag of grain to more bags of grain? Yes, you absolutely can, I've done it myself. I like to, if I'm gonna do that, I will inoculate this with LC, like your first one I'll inoculate with LC, and then I'll spread this usually amongst like seven to 10 grain bags, okay? And you can expand it like seven to 10 times. Set seven is like pretty much ideal. Ten, any more than 10 is getting kind of thin, but I personally like doing around seven and I feel like you get really good results. Now I'll just say the main takeaway here when you're making your grain, going from LC or agar, remember it's gonna take about two weeks to colonize your grain. If you're going grain to grain, it takes about one week, okay? And you just need to kind of like match your schedule around that. Now here's kind of a hack, okay? Storage, okay? So storing grain in a cooler or refrigeration, this is a hack you can use. This is something I'm using. I actually just built a walk-in cooler on my farm this year. I've had other coolers in the past. I've converted deep freezers into refrigeration systems. I've done videos on that. I've actually done a video on the walk-in cooler too. So if you guys wanna check out the video on the walk-in cooler, I'll actually link that down in the description box below so you guys can check that out. But using a walk-in cooler is like such a cheat code. Me having this big one now, we're gonna go in there a little bit. I'm just gonna show you something of the spawn I'm storing in there. But it's really cool because you can make spawn, okay? And then once it's fully colonized and it's like this, and you're like, oh man, I don't really need it this week. What's awesome is you can put it away in the walk-in cooler. It's kind of like a little savings account. And like you just wait for that day, you need to tap into it. And sometimes it can even buy you time. You might not have to make anything for a while. That's what's kind of cool. So when it comes to creating a schedule, this is a hack that can make your schedule really kind of variable and you can make it whatever you want. So I'll just say too, once you incorporate something like refrigeration, this is just another reason. You can't really give a specific definitive answer for creating a grain spawn schedule and you just need to know the base principles of creating grain spawn and kind of like the storage and the timing of it. And then once you learn that, then you can do whatever you want, okay? The whole playing field is completely open just because you understand the base principles, okay? So here's the thing, when we have fully colonized grain like this, and let's just say we're not gonna use it, we can go ahead, we can put it in storage in a walk-in cooler, 
and it can be good for about three months, okay? And then you can still use it up to three months later. So I think that's pretty slick. And then that way you can take a break maybe from making grain spawn. You can do the same thing with your bulk substrate too. So, and I'll just say certain uh, strains and species like the pink oyster, for example, the pink oyster is like an anomaly and you cannot refrigerate the pink, but pretty much almost anything else goes. But if you have question about it, if it's more of a tropical species, don't try to refrigerate it because you might have problems, right? Or if you do try to do it, just do like a test batch first and uh, see what happens before you put like everything in there, okay? But anyway, let's go ahead and let's like just check out my walk-in cooler, see what I got going on, and I'll show you guys how I'm storing my grain spawn in there. All right, guys, so here's my cooler back here. You might have seen this in the background in some other videos. And like I said, I'm going to link in the description box below how you guys create can create your own walk-in cooler because I built this thing from scratch. It turned out super cool. So now you guys can uh, check that. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> but you guys can check that out. It's in the description box below. But let's go in here, see what we got. All right, you guys. So, like, I got some grain spawn. I've been storing up here. Over here, we got, we got different sauces. I keep... Got some soy sauce, some salsa up there. The benefits of having the walk-in cooler, and you know, totally, the, like what this is exactly like what a single dude has. You have like a couple tortillas, stuff like that, some pizza crusts, and uh, sauce, I guess. <laughs> and anyway, I have lots of different grain spawns, okay? I've even got some bulk substrate down here. Uh, some of these are from pheno hunts that I'm doing. I've got like a lion's mane pheno hunt, coral tooth pheno hunt that I'm doing. I've got some extra grain jars I've decided to put in there. I've got a coffee um, canister right there. That is to store, I have cordyceps syringes in there actually. We're gonna do a cordyceps grow on the farm and I just got a lot going on right now in the springtime and I won't be able to get to those right away. So what I did, and they can't get light on them, so I put them in a coffee can so that way, since I have a light here in the walk-in cooler, that way there's no light getting on those cordyceps syringes and um, it's not gonna affect them at all. But anyway, the whole thing with putting your spawn and all this stuff in a walk-in cooler, kind of like what I'm doing here, is it slows down the growth, okay? And right now, I've been opening the door quite a bit, but we're at about, four, we're at 40 degrees right now uh, here in the cooler. And in the, in the video that I've done previously, I have had this thing down to like 32, 33 degrees. This is set up with a cool bot and just a window AC unit. But guys, like this is one of my favorite things about my farm now, okay? And the whole, this whole thing, this is spray foam insulation. The whole thing is framed out with like two by sixes. And so I've got like six inches of spray foam basically around this whole thing. And then I got this cool tan over here. I just wanna say, this thing never sweats. I never have a problem with anything like that. There was people commenting in the first video, you know, you know how people on the internet are, but I just wanna say this thing is amazing. It's like one of the coolest things I've ever built on the farm. And um, I just love it. So like, I would just say anybody, like if you're like kind of wondering about building a walk-in cooler on your mushroom farm, dude, if you can afford to do it, do it. Because this is like, like I said, one of the best things I've done here. It's nice because like you have so much space. I've got racks in here. Um, if you're wondering like how big is this, it's like eight by 10 basically is my inside dimensions roughly. Um, or maybe eight by nine roughly. You know, I think the outside was like 10. But when you start putting in the insulation on the walls, you lose uh, quite a bit because they got to be thick walls. So keep that in mind. Like I said, I did two by six framing on here, but it's great because you got all this storage for like whether, like I said, it's mushroom blocks, if it's bulk substrate. We're talking about mainly spawn in this video, but it buys you time on your spawn, okay? And then you don't really have to worry if you like. Let's say you have a stock of it built up, you don't really have to worry. Like, how quickly do I have to make it then, okay, especially if you have a stockpile, you just have to worry about when to inoculate, okay? So it's not really always about when you need to make it. If you have, a, like, a stock built up, it's then it's really about when to inoculate. And, well, I'll do videos kind of talking about inoculation schedules, but I really just want to make sure you guys uh, are really learning, like, the base principles of this stuff and kind of all that. That way you can apply it across the board and everyone can be successful because they're not really a one-size-fits-all answer. So. Hopefully this was really good for you guys. If you guys have any questions about like everything I went over today, just be sure to drop it down below in that comment section and I'll kind of answer all your questions just to make sure you guys can get in a good grain spawn schedule and you just got the hang of things. Like I said, I've put recipes down in the description box below if you guys want to make your own grain spawn. And if you guys are looking for liquid cultures, check out my website, link down in the description box below too. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like to the channel if you haven't already but that's all I got for you on this one and I'll catch you guys on the next one